Here on Weather World, we issue a variety of short, medium, and long-range forecasts each year. But of those forecasts, the most sought after is our winter outlook for the upcoming season, specifically talking about temperature, precipitation, and snow anomalies, if any, that we could see in the months December through February. To weigh in a bunch of those factors, let's bring in John Neese and Pennsylvania State climatologist Kyle Imhoff. Kyle, we'll start with you. Catch us up on how we did last winter and tell us about some analogs you're looking at. That's right, Rob. So let's start looking at last year. We had forecasted near to slightly below average temperatures for the winter season, and that would have worked out really well, except what you see here. Last December was really warm across the entirety of the state, several degrees above average for the month specifically. Now, if you look at the following two months, January and February, we were slightly below average during that period of time. So that would have worked out really well if we didn't have such a warm December. So when you combine that all together for the entire season, we were just slightly above average for the December through February period of time. So now if we switch gears here to this year, looking at a really dry October. So that this, this year in October, it was really dry across much of the country. So when you look back over the past couple of decades, when it's been really dry in the month of October, you can see what the following winter looked like. So a really cool signal across much of the Southern United States and the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, particularly Pennsylvania, you can see we're in some of the colder anomalies there. Now, when you break it down month by month, we start off a bit milder in December and get cooler as we go to January and February. Rob? Interesting that once again, some analogs lean cool for this winter. Thanks for that info, Kyle. John, another factor we're weighing in is in the equatorial Pacific. What can you tell us about a triple dip La Nina? Thanks, Rob. Well, the connection to La Nina and El Nino is one of the strongest predictors we have for winter in the, uh, in the United States. And indeed, this will be the third consecutive winter with a La Nina. Just to remind you what La Nina means, the signature is this pool of relatively cool water in the eastern and central Pacific Ocean. This is the fingerprint of La Nina. And although that's quite far from Pennsylvania, there can be a ripple effect in terms of influencing the positions of the various jet streams. So we looked back at all the previous times when there were three consecutive La Ninas, and this doesn't happen very often. So I don't put a lot of stock in this one because the sample size is small, but it does suggest a cooler than average winter in Pennsylvania. If we only look at recent La Ninas, individual La Ninas that have happened in the last 25 years, we get a different story. Um, it points to a warmer than average winter in Pennsylvania. And I tend to put more stock in this one than the triple dip La Nina composite. Rob? Well, thanks, John and Kyle, for a look at those temperature analogs. Again, looking at what the past can tell us about the future. Now let's just look ahead at a forecast model product. This is the NMME, or North American Multi-Model Ensemble. So it's a mean probabilistic solution of a bunch of different models put together for the three-month period, December, January, and February. And that's compared to the 1991 to 2020 normals. So across the lower 48, this looks like what you'd expect for a La Nina winter with mild weather once again favored in the south. It does lean mild for Pennsylvania, but perhaps most notably so when you break it down month by month, once again leans mild in December like last winter. So as Kyle told you, remember how that skewed last winter and kind of threw off the whole winter season, something to keep in mind when it comes to those temperature players. We're now going to switch gears and talk about precipitation. Kyle, what do your analogs tell us about precip here in Pennsylvania, keeping in mind that last winter was a split decision for the Commonwealth? It was a split decision last winter, Rob, so let's take a look at that a little bit more closely. This is percent of normal precipitation for December 21 through February 22, and you can see it was relatively dry across the eastern half of the state, particularly in southeastern Pennsylvania, and you can see that wet signal showing up with the greens, blues, and purples there in the western half of the state. If we look at snowfall specifically, it was below average across much of the state, but where it really shows up is in the lake effect snow belt and in the mountainous terrain of northeastern Pennsylvania. And you can see there 20, 30 inches below average, which is about 20 to 30 percent of the normal snowfall in some of those areas. Shifting gears again to this year, looking at that analog again of a dry October across the country, this is what the signal shows up. So this is precipitation departures based on the 91 to 2020 normals. And you can see that the, there's a slight wet signal across parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast. And the only wet signal that really shows up in Pennsylvania is focused across Western Pennsylvania. And when you look by month by month, it's a bit of a split decision in terms of dry versus wet across the entire season. Rob? Another split decision in your analog. Thanks, Kyle. John, is there any precipitation clue coming from La Nina? Yeah, again, thanks, Rob. Uh, once again, 
The connection to La Nina or El Nino is one of the strongest predictors we have of winter in uh, the United States, though the precipitation connection is, is a little tougher to make than the temperature connection. But if we look at this triple dip La Nina idea, look back at times when there have been three consecutive La Ninas in, during the winter. Doesn't happen very often, so the sample size here is pretty small, but the idea here is uh, a general drier than average winter in Pennsylvania. As far as if we just look individually at the last, say, seven or eight La Ninas that have occurred in the last 20 or 30 years, the signal's a little different. It leans toward wetter than average in the west and cool, uh, drier than average in eastern Pennsylvania, which is similar to what we saw last winter. Rob? Thanks for that analog insight, John. Once again, we'll take a look at the NMME to see what forecast model guidance suggests. This reflects a La Nina winter with dryness across the south and hints at the lack of nor'easters. Meanwhile, wet in the Pacific Northwest and some clippers crossing the Great Lakes. So another split decision for Pennsylvania, but leaning wetter than average in the western part of the Commonwealth. So weighing all of these factors together, here's a look at our official weather world winter outlook for the 2022-2023 season. We'll call it either side of average. Breaking things down first in terms of temperature, we think it'll be within one to two degrees of average statewide. December it leans warm, but not as warm as that roasty December that we had last year. Likely several cold snaps also in the months of January and February. For precipitation, we think it'll be close to average statewide, with the setup favoring wetter weather in the west once again like last season. For snowfall, of course, remember, one storm is all it takes. We think it'll be near average in the lake effect snow belt, but less than average for snowfall in eastern PA thanks to limited nor'easters. It's important to note that despite all of the advances in seasonal forecasting, it's still quite a challenge to put these forecasts together with all of the uncertainty in a changing climate. But that'll do it for our official winter weather outlook. I want to thank John and Kyle for joining me tonight. You bet, Rob. Always a pleasure, Rob. We'll be back in just a moment with more.